said spider Gavin number five would be my next review but uh i wanted to get this out before tomorrow and i'm having trouble getting these videos out uh on days that i work simply because getting enough quiet time on the days that i work around here um is a little difficult but anyway um so this is friendly neighborhood spider-man number one and the cover is Blah. Okay, I guess. Am I the only one who's sick of these generic covers on every Spider-Man book? I swear, I think that they don't know what the content of the book is going to be before they send out, before they, when they have to decide on a cover, so they just keep going with these generic covers of Spider-Man or whoever the Spider-Person is in the book, um, swinging on a web and then some neon background neon color background it's so generic and unexciting though i understand that it but that they have that they have to meet deadlines with these uh, but to me if you're going to make the covers this generic why even bother why not just go with i don't know some sort of just have the hero's face on the cover or something and have all the covers look the same So, anyway, so, yeah, this is a brand new book, Mother of Exiles, Part 1. For some reason, it opens on a shot of the Statue of Liberty, and Spider-Man's just swinging around, and, well, and at first the book gets off to a good start. Uh, we see, like, a montage, so I guess this is establishing that this does, in fact, take place in the main timeline. I know that I know that I know that that seems like a little detail, but it's something that I like, and the artwork looks pretty good. It's something that I like to have simply because they have so many timelines and so many different Spider People. I picked up this book, but I wasn't entirely sure. Um, I could pick up this book last week, but I didn't have a chance to read it until today, and I wasn't entirely sure what timeline it took place in, because they've got so many Spider-Man books and so many different timelines, so it's nice to have actually a uh, kind of quiet shot that just establishes where you are. And a uh, family drives their van off a, off a broken bridge, and uh, Spider-Man saves them. His costume scares a girl, I guess, because it has a spider on it. If they want to offer him a reward, he tells them to give it to a homeless person down the street. And he then gets, uh, and he then goes to his apartment, and, uh, this is something that I just don't get. Um, they have this character here who acts like Aunt May. She looks like Aunt May. I thought she was Aunt May until they said otherwise. I don't understand why it's not Aunt May. Just have her move out of Queens and, and be in the same apartment building as Peter. It really seems redundant to have two doddering old ladies doting on Peter Parker in the exact same way. I'm sorry, but it just does. To me, the character feels redundant. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to show Peter's friendly nature and stuff, but still, it just feels like Without the existing relationship with Aunt May, this just feels like filler, and even then, it, and anyway, and anyway, um, she seems to be, and anyway, um, she asks him if he can look in on a neighbor, because she's, was asking, uh, about, about Peter, because he takes pictures of Spider-Man, and, she makes a big deal about giving him apples. I don't know. Does she think apples give somebody Popeye, like, strength or something? I don't know. I try an all-apple diet, but uh, I'm afraid what that would do to my system. I, so I would, so I'm not going to test out that hypothesis. 
And then awkward conversation, of course, because uh, she asks if he knows a better hero. Yeah. Not off to a great start, lady. Also, he offers her an apple, or I don't know. Apples seem to be a running thing. Is Tom Taylor obsessed with apples or something? So he go check things out. Obviously, she's afraid of something. They act like this takes some sort of deduction, or Peter has to be some sort of sensitive, ultra sensitive, nice guy to t to notice this. But really, to me, it just comes off as. She's so shaky and obviously hiding from something, uh, you'd have to be blind not to see it. So, uh, so anyway, he goes back, so anyway, he has lunch with some couple that he helped or something, and he goes back to the apartment and he sees some cars that look like the cars, um, if you've ever seen the old British cop show, the, um, the the Sweeney, one of the ways that they saved money on that show was they always had they always had the criminals driving around in the same car all the time. This Jaguar. Um, no matter what no matter what villain of all, <laughs> no matter what no matter what criminal they were hunting down that week, it was always driving around in Jaguar. The Sweeney is a good show, but you just notice that watching it. And it's like the you got two of them sitting right there. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be Jaguars, but they got that same look to them. He goes in, he notices he realizes something's wrong, Herb. And then Yeah. The uh but then, uh, but then he, um, he, uh, then she seems to have been, her door has been broken down and it seems to be the, a bunch of observers from Fringe are in her room and, uh, Peter tries to pass himself off as a delivery man and I think what they're trying to do is, here is show that this guy has super strength, but I'm not sure. Otherwise, it makes Peter look like a dope who got rolled over because he, uh, because he actually got punched out by an average street thug. And he didn't dodge it to keep his identity a secret. My only problem with this scene is that this isn't the way I, I think. Ink Peter would have hand. I'm guessing the unex the guy has unexpected super strength. I guess because otherwise it makes no sense. Otherwise, I can't believe Peter would do this. I have a feeling, you know, it just feels like in a normal situation Peter would try. Peter Peter would deal with the thugs and then explain later. Instead, he gets up and uh, yeah. L Lily, Liliana was um was obviously afraid of somebody with connections, and so he figures that the police aren't coming. And again, to deal with his head trauma, this lady gives him a bag of apples. What is this? Is this supposed to be a gag? It's not a very good one. And then we have my most hated thing in all of Spider-Man comics. The annoying roommate who makes your hero a pushover. It's a stupid cliche that's coming in whenever your hero is supposed to be a nice guy. It happens on TV and comics that did this. And this is especially not good in Spider-Man. For, I mean... It's just annoying, and it takes up valuable time that we could be spending on the adventure. Second of all, I can't see Peter rolling over like this and letting another guy wear his underwear and all this. For it, Yeah, Peter's a nice guy, but he's never been this push-over wuss. In fact, one of the reasons he used to get beat up by in high school so much wasn't that... wasn't because wasn't because he's just some wuss who rolls over for bullies like this guy, this inconsiderate jackass who just uh, takes the stuff and is la and is a lousy person and just, I want to see him die, painfully. Yeah, characters like this should die. The creators who make annoying roommate characters, should, the lowest level of hell should be reserved for them. Vil it's just, ugh. Because they're just annoying and they, ugh. And anyway, 
Peter is not this pushover. He always stood up to the bullies. He always has. He always stands up for himself, and sometimes that gets him into trouble. One of Peter's character traits is that he can be a little hot-headed. Like, um, let's take a look at this panel from somebody who knows how to write Peter Parker. And that is, and that is the great Tom DeFalco. And this is a flashback to Spider Girl, to Spider Girl number ten, issue ten. And if you look, look at what Peter's doing. He's standing up to Flash Thompson. He's not letting him push him around like he's some sort of wuss. He's telling him like it is, and. And he and he's refusing and he's refusing to just slink away the way Peter does in the modern comics. So I hate this character because he's annoying and he takes up screen time and he and he and he just turns Peter into a type of wuss who I could never believe is a hero. They the, these the modern writers they just assume that there's nothing of Spider-Man in Peter Parker that he totally changes into a different person when he c puts on the Spider-Man costume and that's not true at all. Yeah, he gets to emphasize different parts of his personality, but he's not a completely different person. And then he gets scared by the Children of the Damned who happen to be in his laundry basket. And that's it. Yeah. This was a $5 comic, but we're not done. But here's the thing. What we have left? Well, there is one nice scene in this. Peter and MJ having a picnic on the top of the Empire State Building. And they try to make this sweet moment here with Aunt May writing this letter to Peter, but come on. She's dot she it turns out she's dying of cancer. That's all this is. This is like a 10-page story, and we, the kingpin is buying the hospital that she's going to. But here's the thing. I'm sorry if you think I'm heartless, but I can't. But you can't get a reaction with me out of me with this. Aunt May has been dying since the comic started over 50 years ago, and if they're really killing her off this time... Well, they already did that, and in a much better way, in Amazing Spider-Man number 400, back when I was a kid, more than 20 years ago. So they keep resurrecting her, bringing her back, just so they can do the same old Aunt May dying. So there's no creativity to this. There's just nothing. So yeah, here are my thoughts. This was $5, and I can't believe that it was $5. Here's my problem with this book. I know a lot of people like it, and I like the Peter and MJ moment, and and that rescue moment was fine, but everything plot-wise that happened in this could have been told in five or ten pages of a regular comic and still had Spider-Man uh, have an exciting adventure. This is the problem with modern comics. They've gotten so decompressed and the sales and the prices keep going up and up, you can't hook in readers. A uh, number one should be a blockbuster, especially if it's a giant size one that you're charging extra money for. This is everything wrong with modern comics right here. Yeah, the art looks good and there are a few decent character moments, but that's it. That's all you get for five bucks. And it's just like, wow. Here's the thing. All you had to show, you didn't even have to show that rescue. All you had to show was Peter helps old lady in with her, with her, with her stuff. That's one, that's one page. Peter helped, Peter, um, Peter, Peter then goes and talks to a woman who's obviously afraid. That's a page, page and a half, maybe two pages. Peter gets lunch. Peter goes back, gets gets knocked out. Peter then finds the children of the damned. Yeah, Peter goes back and gets knocked out. That's one more page. Peter gets knocked out by the children of the damned. Okay, that's five pages. Then, if you want to add this cliched Aunt May is dying of cancer, breast cancer storyline, fine. But... That's just one or two pages more, so that's like seven, eight pages max that this should have been. Instead, it went on for like 45 pages of content. 40, 45 pages of content, and they had the nerve to charge extra money for this. I'm sorry, but, f but I have to rate this based on the price. If this had been maybe... If this had made... If they had maybe given this away as a special preview or it had been part of something bigger, but as I see it, what was in this book 
couldn't could could have put been put into any Spider-Man book and still had time for its own plot. So yeah, I so yeah, based on what this is, on what its price, you know, they could have made this like an eight page preview that they gave away on free comic book day and then launched this book with something more exciting. But as it stands, based on its price, now if you happen to find now this may change if it turns out a lot of these go into the dollar bins. I've been noticing a lot of the a lot of these new number ones are going straight into the dollar bins and are ending up at Walmart in four for a dollar bundle, in four for um four dollar bundle. So if that happens, yeah. But right now I have to rate this a three out of ten. This is just below par with the artwork and a scene with Mary Jane being the only thing that saves it. Sorry if you think that's a bit harsh, but that's where I stand on this. So thank you very much for listening to my ranting and I'll see you next time. <laughs>